if you think this doesn't look like Seoul, you're right. These clips are from my trip up the Korean East Coast Trail, a bike path stretching along the shore from Busan in the south to the border with North Korea. This was my first long distance bike trip, and I was apprehensive. So I cut off a few hundred kilometers and started in Pohang. Pohang, in and of itself, is a medium sized beach town standing in the shadow of the Busan metropolis. Because of this, it's considerably quieter than Busan. I was there in the middle of summer, and it felt kind of empty. Nonetheless, it still has a great beach and some interesting sights to see. So after riding through the town, I started the journey, following the blue signs that marked the path the whole way. On the first day, my goal was to ride to Young Duck, a small town about 50 kilometers to the north of Pohang. According to some blogs I had found online, riding northward meant that I was going to ride with the wind. But this wasn't my case. For the first two days, I was fighting pretty strong headwinds that made it hard to get out of even the lower gears and made each kilometer feel like five. That being said, on the first day I came across some really beautiful views. Ocean cliffs, rice paddies, and forests opening into mountainous farmland. Coming into Young Duck, the first thing you'll notice are crabs everywhere. This town, like many along the coast, is famous for its Bering Sea Snow Crab. If you want to try it, be prepared to pay a high price and beware that it might be hard to find a place friendly to solo customers, as most people come with big groups. For Young Duck, I can recommend staying at the Marine Hanjung Sauna, which is located just before this bridge. It only costs 8,000 won, and you can stay there for 12 hours. The staff are really nice too. Now begins day two of my four-day bike trip up the Korean East Coast Trail. I'm in Yongduk right now, and my goal is to get to Uljin, which is about 100 kilometers. So, let's go. Riding out of Yongduk, you'll be treated to great views as the rocky cliffs and mountains rise out of the sea. And if you're looking for pristine, secluded beaches, this is where I'd look. While on the first day there are some hills, the second day turns into a real proving ground. The hills turn into small mountains, and they're fairly steep. Be warned, most of the entire trail is peppered by these ascents, and if you're fighting the wind like I was, be ready for a challenge. I even had to get off my bike a couple of times to walk up. That being said, what goes up must come down, and the roads careening towards the ocean offer spectacular vistas of what's to come. Although it's called the East Coast Trail, you're not riding the beach the whole time. There are large sections where the path cuts inland, through hilly farmland seemingly forgotten by most of the country. There's a park near Hopu Beach, about halfway between Yongduk and Iljin that is a great spot to stretch your legs, as if you need that. The flowers and windmills make for a picturesque landscape, and you might come across something interesting in the gazebo. I came into Uljin later in the evening, just enough time to get something to eat. It's a quiet town that doesn't have the claims to fame that Pohang or Young Duck have. That being said, just south of Uljin there's some beach areas where I saw festivals going on, 
that I'd have checked out if I wasn't so tired from all the mountains. That night, I stayed in the Hawaii Jim Jilbang, right in the middle of town. The floor wasn't as comfortable as in Young Duck because they only gave you a small towel to sleep on. But the staff were nice and it only cost $8 for the night. On the third day, I rode 87 kilometers from Uljin to Donghe. Starting off, the trail takes you on a tour through the winding and of course steep back alleyways of Uljin. Be mindful of the blue line because it's easy to get lost. And just as a forewarning, the trail took me in a big circle. So when in doubt, stay on the main road going north and you'll be fine. 99% of the trail is on roads, but there are some nice surprises now and again. Like this walkway wrapping around a rock jutting into the ocean. It offered a nice view of the beach and it felt like I had the place all to myself. Continuing further north, civilization seems to fade away as the hotels and restaurants drift into the distance, giving rise instead to factories and barbed wire. That's not to say there's nothing interesting to be seen here. This is the Korea that was long forgotten by Seoul and Busan. Returning to the mountains, you enter what's called the Romantic Highway. Korea has a knack for making everything cheesy. I stopped for lunch and noticed that I was next to this really cool resort town. Remember all those people who weren't at the other beaches? Well, here they are. The water is clear, so if you have some space in your bags, bring some goggles for a bit of snorkeling. Riding out of the mountains, you move through some pristine rolling farmland, followed by more beaches. They start to be full of people, so if you wanted seclusion, it's too late by this point. From what I've heard, the beach is a good place to camp, but I didn't try it. Getting closer to Donghe, civilization once again surrounds you. The small fishing towns turn once again into hotels and barbecue restaurants. From here on out, the worst of the ascents are finished. And if the wind is at your back, the riding is easy. Actually riding into Donghe, I didn't get that much footage, because honestly there wasn't much reason for me to turn on my camera. Donghe seemed to me like an industrial port city, full of factories and shipyards. In Donghe I spent the night in Mokobaran guest house, which set me back about 25,000 won. But for me it was worth it because at that point I was tired of sleeping on the floor in Jimjo Bangs. The owners were extremely nice. They shared their dinner with me and they let me play with their cats. The fourth day brought me to the end of my journey, riding 50 kilometers to the bus station in Gangrung. This day was the easiest, so I could go slow and take it all in. On this last section, things started to repeat themselves. I moved from small fishing town to coastal highway to the beach town wash, rinse, repeat. However, at this point the beaches end as the trail cuts inland towards Gangrung. So keep that in mind if you still have a few shades to go on your tan. I had two flat tires on the trail, so as a tip, have a good amount of patches and tubes with you. Bike shops are few and far between in this region, but I was able to find a junk shop owner who had some tubes in Young Duck. Of course, they cost me twice as much as they would have in Seoul. It's not common to see other foreigners, but I passed a couple of groups of Korean cyclists. They're very friendly and eager to lend a hand if you need help. Here are some basic phrases you can use to communicate with them. 안녕하세요 means hello. 도와주세요 means help me please. 괜찮아요 means are you okay? And 감사합니다 means thank you. Finally, after riding 10 kilometers through the city and 275 kilometers from Pohang, the
the ever so unimpressive Gangrung bus terminal comes into view and the trip is over. So after doing the trip, I can definitely say it's worth it, but there are some pros and cons. The trail is absolutely beautiful and marked off well with blue lines and signs along the way. You're never too far from any sort of civilization, should an emergency arise. There are many campsites and beaches where you can set up a tent, and Jim Jilbong's or Airbnb's offer affordable accommodations. However, the trail is definitely difficult. I trained a few months for it, and there were some points where I still had to walk my bike up the mountain. Also, you don't pass any big traveler hubs, so I wouldn't expect much nightlife or other social activities. But really, no matter the cons, if you can, go. It was a great first bike tour for me, and I'm sure you'll have a blast if you do the same. Good luck!